Microsoft announced that they're gonna be supporting ARM, not just x64, but also ARM versions of Visual Studio by the end of the year. And they're gonna have some hardware, so uh, if you wanna see those reviews, consider subscribing to the channel. When they come out, I'll get a box in here, we'll test it out. But for now, Visual Studio 2022 preview, two of version 17.3, blah, so many numbers. That version, that preview build supports ARM and it's the prequel to what's coming. So I wanted to check it out. But first, here is a brand new version of Visual Studio 17.2.4, the one right before that. So I wanna compare it. I wanna see if the workflows that have been failing so far running on ARM will actually work and work better or work at all on the new version of Visual Studio that's ARM compatible. All right, so here I am running Visual Studio for the very first time and this is on my Mac with the Apple Silicon chip. This is the M1 Max MacBook Pro and I'm running the latest version of Parallels so I can run Windows for ARM inside of it. Um, if you're curious about Parallels, there's a link down below. There's a 25% coupon. Uh, yeah, it's a Parallels deal right now. Use my link down below, get 25% off. It's a paid product, but it's the best right now for running Windows on Apple Silicon machines. All right, so here's Visual Studio 2022. I wanna create a brand new project here. And um, I did get that message when I was installing this. It's a warning saying that if you install this on Windows for ARM, it's not gonna work as well. I'm paraphrasing the warning, but that's what it said basically. What's happening here, folks, is that this version of Visual Studio is the x64 version. So while we are running Parallels natively on ARM, we're running Windows natively in parallel because it's an ARM version of Windows. Visual Studio is not. So Windows that's virtualized has to translate the Visual Studio as it's running into ARM. And that translation layer is eh, it's not as fast as it could be. All right, let's try an ASP.NET Core web app. I should probably get my timer so I can time these things stopwatch and that way I'll be able to do some kind of comparison between the versions when I get the ARM version installed. All right so when I click next uh, I don't think it's going to create the project yet but just in case. Nope I need to give it a name of course web app 1 x64 and next. .NET 6 long-term support. .NET 6 by the way is a version of .NET that does support ARM. Authentication none. This would be interesting because HTTPS wasn't working previously. I'm gonna uncheck that anyway because I don't want to compare that right now but I wonder if that's been fixed in the ARM version of Visual Studio. We'll see. And when I click create that's when I'll start the timer. Boom. Okay it's creating. It's spinning. Creating project. Still working on it. 16, 17 seconds in. It's creating the project. The project is being created. Um, and now we're starting the project and now it's finally opened up the project, I think. 40 seconds. Oh, it's still spinning. Anyway, it's taking a while. Oh yeah, the UI is really, really laggy. And I think I've showed this before on this channel. Um, it's pretty laggy, but I'm gonna go ahead and kick this off. So 40 seconds to create the project. Now I'm gonna time building and running it. So I'm gonna press this button. It's gonna build it and run it. Go. Okay, build is started. It's building. Now this is supposed to pop open a browser when it's done building. So that's how I'll know. Oh, trust the IS certificate. Sure, yes. Oh, is that gonna work now? Okay, what's happening? So it did run it and it ran it pretty decently. I'm actually kind of impressed. So HTTPS still doesn't work, but HTTP does work. I wonder why it asked me about a SSL certificate if it's not gonna be using it, I don't know. Let's do a subsequent run and build. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and say clean, and let's do that one more time. Start, this way we'll get a clean build and run. Let's see how long that takes. Uh-huh, not bad, 6.46 seconds. That's actually not bad. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna create a brand new project. This is gonna be a console application. Next, console app x64, next. Okay, that was actually really fast. Five seconds to create that one. Let's run that one. Hey, this has gotten a lot better. Three seconds to run that console app. Now, I wonder if we can grab a benchmarks game test and try that out. Let's find my favorite Mandelbrot. Here we go. I like this test because it uses all the CPUs and there's C sharp.net right there. Let's grab that code. I'm just gonna copy that whole source code out. This is the implementation of the algorithm, the Mandelbrot algorithm, which is essentially um, fractals. It's supposed to kick up the CPU quite a bit. Hopefully this will just run out of the box. I hope. Okay, so there's our console app. Uh, let me make sure that this runs. Let's get PowerShell open. Okay, here we are. I think I just do .NET here. Yep, .NET and then 
provided that DLL that we've built in production. All right, so that would be the name of the DLL and then 16,000 is the parameter we're gonna pass in. And the name of the DLL is console app x64 DLL and then 16,000. Let's see what happens here. Hey, it's working. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm gonna execute this again and this time I wanna time it and uh, you know what? Let's use measure command commandlet. Boom. Okay, 3.8 seconds, let's call it that. Now I'm gonna drag this file over to my Mac just because it's easier to check the type of file that it is. So here I can just type in file and then console and then this will tell me what kind of file it is. So it's um, PE32 executable, huh? Mono.NET assembly for MS Windows. So this right here kind of tells me that it's not an ARM based executable, which is right. Let's move that to trash. We'll come back here. Now I want to move on to the next step and I want to get the ARM version. So we have something to compare this to. And there's this post that came out recently on June 14th by Mark Downey. He basically goes into what's changed, what workflows work, what workflows are still in development. So .NET and web development should be up and running right now. Let's check it out. There's also a link here to download it. So I'm gonna download this. I will have to uninstall my current version of Visual Studio, unfortunately. Let's download this one. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to close this down. It's sad, but you know what? I may be able to reuse that code without creating, well, I still have to create the project. Never mind. Uninstall Visual Studio. Okay, takes forever to install and I just did it. So now I feel kind of bad about uninstalling it. Okay, I've uninstalled the previous one. Now here is the installation for the 17.3.0 preview 2.0. And you see that not all the workflows are available, only a couple. So I'm gonna select this one, web development. Yes. Oh, it's bigger. Wow. <laughs> it's it's like three gigabytes bigger than the previous one. I don't, I don't know why, why is that? I don't know. And it, we got a little pre icon there to know that this is the preview. All right, don't know how long this will take, but it'll take a while. I'll be back. Okay, it's done installing. Let's have a look. I did not get that warning message that I did last time. It's a good sign, no? Yeah. Preparing for first use. This is a whole new era of Visual Studio. And if this works, this is a really nice step. Oh, okay, I'm kind of nervous. Create new project. The spinners are there. They're not there for quite as long, but they're still there. ASP.NET Core Web App. Let's go. Next, Web Application 1, ARM. Next. And yes, uh, long-term support. I'm not gonna do HTTPS, even though I really wanna try it to see if that issue was fixed, but I want it to be the same as before, so it wouldn't be fair. Now also, from the dropdown, you'll see that .NET 7 is available. I'm not gonna do that yet to keep things fair, but also wanna try that one. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see that video. Create. All right, it's creating. Can we beat 40 seconds? Whoa, Um. yeah. Folks, we got a usable. <laughs> I I am just, I am pleased. Alex is pleased. <laughs> 10 seconds, folks, to create this one instead of 40. And the interface is super fluid. It's super usable. The pages just pop open. Oh, this is nice. Good job, Visual Studio team. This is great. I'm really happy. I'm happy about this. I wasn't sure they can pull it off, but they did it, and they did it with speed. Okay, we're not done with the test yet. I'm just, I'm gonna cry. Okay, building and running the web app. I'm gonna press the button and let's go. Okay, so that was 13 seconds, but remember the first time I ran it, I had to do it twice because I got that message. So let's do this again. I'm gonna clean the app, uh, clean the project I should say, and let's go. That was five seconds. 6.46 versus five. Not that much of a difference, but still faster and it feels spiffy. That's nice. It's quick. Next, we're gonna close this one up and create a new project, a console application. By the way, the interface is flying. I'm really happy about this. Console app arm next and create. Uh, two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, five seconds with the previous version. And one more for the hello world, which is console run. This shouldn't take long at all. Oh, I, I didn't even have time to, uh, let's just call it half a second, okay? Let's, let's call it one second, previously three seconds. So that's ridiculously fast. There's one more thing I wanna do, and that's the Mandelbrot test. 
Now, I wonder if it'll just open up the previous version for me. And it did. It just opened it right up. To keep things clean, I'm not going to build this one, even though it should just work. I'm going to instead copy the code from here and then go back to my arm hello world. Okay, so paste this in here, save it, and let's go with uh, release build. There we go. And now I'm gonna open up PowerShell so I can run this release build. There it is. Now, before I run that, let's just make sure this is the ARM version. So I'm gonna drag this out to my Mac and look at the file itself. Ha! Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting. It still says Intel 8386mono.net assembly. Shouldn't this say ARM at this point? I don't know why it said uh, 386. So if I go here to configuration manager and I do a solution platform, it looks like ARM32 is something I can select. So I'm gonna choose ARM64, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna be building directly for ARM64. Let's clean it and rebuild it. I just wanna look at that file, that DLL when it's built and to make sure that it's actually, you know, an ARM file. Yes. There it is, look at that. So now the architecture is 64. Cool, I'm gonna run this one first to get the speed for it. And maybe then we'll rebuild it for any CPU and run that one too. So that would be measure command and then dot net console app arm DLL and 16,000 is my parameter. Let's go 3.8 for Mandelbrot. That's the same as I got before. Well, that time didn't really improve, did it? Interesting, okay. I'm gonna clean this. Let's target any CPU and rebuild it all right now we're gonna back up to well oh oh i didn't run the arm build okay i ran the release build that's why the time is the same let me go to the arm build now and run that one there's nothing there i think i just cleaned it that's why oh alex there it is this is the arm version and maybe this one will be faster let's see boom 3.7 <laughs> Well, let's run it again, 3.7. So it's a little bit faster. After all, it is the production build and the builds that target X64 might have some optimizations that have not yet been implemented in the ARM versions. Perhaps it'll be much faster later on, but it is a little bit faster. And the whole experience of Visual Studio has really impressed me so far. I can actually use this thing now. Now, I wanna do one more thing, close the solution, and I wanna make sure that HTTPS works out of the box because I'm gonna create a brand new .NET Core Web app, ARM, HTTPS, and configure for HTTPS. Hopefully this will work out of the box. I know that previous version did not support HTTPS out of the box. You had to do all kinds of crazy configurations. All right, let's run this project and it should give me a warning saying that there is a SSL certificate that needs to be configured. Yes. You're about to install the certificate. Yes. And it works. <laughs> all right, folks. We've made it. All those people waiting for Visual Studio to run on their ARM computers, here it is. Next, SQL Server. Pretty please.